news of the day from Ed Ogeron's press conference was that Andre Anthony, the six-year senior Tiger defensive end who scored his first career touchdown on Saturday, also has likely played his last game for LSU as he is out for the season with that knee injury that took him out of the game on Saturday. Just uh, absolutely devastating news uh, for a number of reasons, certainly. Though the guy was you know, primed to have his best year as a Tiger, was a huge part of the leadership on this team and was a productive edge rusher on this team, and, and, and they won't have him anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't have been shocked this year if, if Andre ended up with nine or ten sacks. That's just the pace he was on. He just was wreaking havoc off the edge, and you just watched him all camp long. He looked like he was really coming to his own, especially going into his sixth year over here at LSU, and it's a tough blow, man. Uh, now we're really, really light at the defensive end position. Um, do one of these younger guys uh, come in, Xavier Carter, maybe one of these younger guys come in and help this defense, but – now you're super light at defensive end, and teams are going to be scheming that up. So let's see how Coach Jones and, and the rest of the staff figure out a way to you know fix this. But it, it's just a huge blow to lose right now. Well, we'll talk about how LSU fixes that, and Ed Ogeron addressed that a little bit if, you, if you're listening to the press conference. But I want to talk about Anthony first. I mean, that's a guy who you know, kind of waited his turn, um, had some rough years, quite honestly, uh, lack of production, kind of out of place in a defense that was changing – they were going from a 3-4 back to a 4-3, and it just it never it couldn't really find his way. And it looked like after the end of last year and, and what he had done earlier this year, that he had really found his spot and was playing some great football. And to be quite honest, as I mentioned, he's a, a maybe the leader of this team. And he chose to come back for a sixth year, could have moved on and tried to, to trace that NFL dream. He decided to come back for a sixth year to play. And quite frankly, I, this LSU team – in my opinion, is not done losing football games. And to have guys in the locker room like Anthony to keep things on the tracks when you're going through some adversity is so important. And he's still going to be there, but he's not going to be out there practicing every day. He's not going to be out there on the field in the games. So you wonder if that leaves a void. We'll just have to see. Yeah, well, they talked about that last year when they lost to Mississippi State. The turmoil kind of just took over that locker room. You lose Joe Burrow. You lose a lot of leadership in that locker room. And things go south, they go south fast. And so that's where it goes to the veteran leadership. A guy like Andre is a perfect example of a guy who, after the UCLA game, just you know tried to keep everyone's head on straight, tried to you know remind everyone why we do this. We, our goals are still in front of us. And you lose that guy, it's just a big blow emotionally, leadership-wise, and, and his play on the field. The dude was going to be probably our sack leader this year. You lose your sack leader, and now you got to find ways to replace that. So. Huge blow for this defense, but still a lot of talent in that defensive line room. Let's see how we move things around. So, Ed Ogeron mentioned that. He said Ali Gay is expected back this week, so that's a good thing. You had him out for a couple weeks. Now he should be back in the lineup this week, so that's going to be one of your starting defensive ends. They have moved Mason Smith to defensive end, and he's going to get some more reps on the outside. They've got a lot of depth on the interior of the defensive front. Hopefully Glenn Logan comes back in the coming weeks, but do you like Mason Smith playing outside a little bit? Yeah, uh, I do, but I'm not sure. I mean, I think he's just better from the D-tackle position. I watched him, all those reps he had uh, from the edge, and he really wasn't getting as much pressure. They moved him back inside. He got a pressure the very next third down. So it's going to be an adjustment for him. Uh, he has the rush moves. He has the talent. He has the size and ability. But it's just going to be an adjustment. Anytime you're switching position, it's it's an adjustment, especially as a freshman. And now you're asking him to play defensive end in the SEC uh, going into this SEC schedule. So, um, if there's a kid to do it, it'd be him. <laughs> he's a five-star prospect, best player in the state, and just a kid who's really come on alive as he's as the season's gone on. So let's see what he does at the defensive end position. But if you really have to ask me, I'd rather just keep him at D-tackle. And B.J. Ojolari is going to be your other defensive end uh, opposite Ali Gay. Very likely Ojolari was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week this week. Um, he was back in the backfield a lot against Central Michigan, had two and a half sacks. Um, so, you know, with on the outside, you're talking about having Gay – Ojalari, you can bump Mason Smith out. I don't know if they want to play you know, Jarrell Cherry maybe a little bit more. He got some action on Saturday night. And on the inside, you know, you stick with Neil Farrell and Joe Evans, and Mason Smith, Jaquillan Roy, Jacoby and Guillory got some snaps. So it's not as if LSU is, is totally out of bodies here. Uh, they're just not quite as deep on the edges as they were you know, when they entered the season. But it's good news that Ali Gay is going to be coming back and maybe that Mason Smith can give him a little help. Uh, when they want to play, you know, maybe on some first downs against the run, which you you know obviously won't see as much of this coming week. But they've they've got some numbers there. So